Hello everyone. Let's talk about the object-oriented programming in this lecture. In the future, when we mention object-oriented programming, I will use a short term, OOP, to represent this development philosophy. What is uh, object-oriented programming, or a OOP? First, I want to show you an example. Have you played a game called uh, Super Mario Brothers before? If you have, you could meet uh, several million of characters inside of this game. We have uh, flying turtles, monster mushrooms, and big boss. We also have uh, Mario and Luigi Brothers. It's fun to have so many characters inside of this game. But uh, it raises a development question to developers. Do we need to create all of these million characters one by one, or we have something better to use? This is actually a good question, because we want to save time in the development process. So we have to find some better way to create so many characters for this game. This is what we can do. We first look at all these characters in the game. We found we can classify them into two groups. The first group is the bad guys, and the second group is the good guys. Then we look at each group. Inside of the bad guy group, no matter how many turtles, mushrooms, or big boss we have, they have so many things in common. For instance, all of them can run, all of them can shoot fires, all of them try to kill Mario Brothers. We want to summarize all these common properties, characteristics, or capabilities among bad guys into a model. Next time when we create a new bad guy, we only need to make a copy from this model that has all these common properties, capabilities, or characteristics. For instance, we want to create a new flying turtle. We only need to make a copy of the bad guy, so we don't have to repeat and waste the time in developing those common properties such as kill Mario Brothers, shoot fires, and so on. We can also apply the same principle to the good guy group. Both Mario and Luigi have something in common. For instance, both of them can run, both of them can use weapons, both of them can save Princess Peach. So we want to summarize all these common properties or characteristics into a good guy model. Next time when we create a, a new good guy, for instance, your Mario got killed, the game will give you a new Mario. The game only needs to make a copy from the good guy model. This example shows two very important concepts to everyone. They are a class and an object. We call a model that summarizes the common properties and functionalities of a group of something, a class. We call a copy from a class, an object. For instance, we can treat customers as a class because all customers have uh, some common properties. All of them have a name. All of them has a mailing address and so on and so forth. That's why we can treat all customers as a class. Then each individual customer in this class population is an object. Eric can be considered as an object of the customer's class. Tina is another object of the customer's class, and so on and so forth. Cars is another good example of a class. Each individual brand can be considered an object from the cars class. Honda is an object of the cars class. Ford Motors is another object of the cars class and so on and so forth. We always want to ask ourselves a question. Can I expand the current application into a class? If I can, that will be great. Because in the future, 
if I develop a similar application. I don't have to repeat the development process. I only need to make a copy from the class. That will save a lot of cost and time for a developer. What does OOP mean to Android developers? When we create our first app, the Flashlight app, I ask you to drag and drop the toggle button from the palette panel into the UI design window. What is this thing I just highlighted on this slide? After our discussion in OOP just now, you should realize that this is actually a graphical representation of a toggle button class. The Android development team has realized the, the benefits of using OOP. So the team summarized all the common properties of a toggle button and create a toggle button class for the global developers. When you and I develop our own app, we don't need to develop the toggle button from the scratch. We only need to drag and drop the toggle button class into our app. Then we will have a copy of the toggle button class. If you recall, we really didn't develop any codes for the toggle button when we create the flashlight app. But uh, the toggle button is clickable in our app. The text on the toggle button can switch between on and off. The reason is we made a copy of the toggle button class offered by the Android development team. As I showed you on the left of this slide, in a palette panel of Eclipse, we could have other controls. For instance, regular button, checkbox, spinner, and so on. They are all graphical representations of control classes. We have so many classes. How do we know how we can use them to create instances? The Android development team has created an online library for the global developers. This library shows us what, what kind of classes are available, how we can use these classes to create control instances. The user interface of the library looks similar to the one on the right in this slide, and the web address is also listed in this slide. Now let's take a look at uh, the real library. This is what the library website looks like. In the upper right corner, we have a very important function, the search function. When you want to find out how to use a control class, you type in the control name inside of the search bar. For instance, we want to know how to use toggle button class. You type in toggle button, the search bar will offer you two options. On the left, it shows an example of using the class to the developer. On the right, it shows all the available functions inside of the toggle button class. If you have two options, I suggest you to always look at the example first. It shows how you can develop in codes for each class. Let's take a look at the toggle button class example. On this web page, you can see what a toggle button looks like. Also, the website shows you how you can transform a graphical toggle button into XML codes. If you scroll down, you will find a collection of example codes at the bottom of this web page. This example shows us how to manipulate the toggle button control programmatically. This code gives us many hints. First of all, it shows us how to programmatically declare a toggle button. And then we can use the find view by ID to connect the programmatic toggle button with the graphical toggle button on the UI window. The second hint is, it shows us how to show different surveys or information on the screen when the button is turned on and off. 
Let's focus on the middle of this course. We use a if-else structure to evaluate if this button is turned on. If it is turned on, then we should add some calls in the if structure. Otherwise, the button is off, and we should add some calls in the else structure. This example also shows us that if we want to manipulate the toggle button programmatically, we don't need to develop the calls from scratch. We can copy this calls and then paste it into our own app. What we only need to do is to add the calls for the if and else structure. This is a very brief overview about uh, how to manipulate toggle button programmatically. Now let's talk about uh, our own app. How we can copy and paste this example calls into the flashlight app. And then we can modify the if else structure. How can we use the library to support our own app development. After we create a new project in Eclipse, we can see that uh, the IDE offers some uh, programming codes for us automatically. For instance, the package, the import, and so on. We don't need to program them again, but I do want everyone to understand what these automatic codes mean. The first uh, automatic code, package statement, indicate that where we want to save our own app. We set up this location when we create the app project. So in the programming code, we don't need to change anything in the package statement. The second automatic code is the import code. Next to import, you will see a little plus sign. If you click on it, you can open all the import statement. If you click uh, the minus sign again, you can close this block. The import statement indicates to the IDE that what kind of uh, classes we want to borrow from the Android library into our own app so that we can create the instances of the control classes. For instance, you will see a import android.widget.toggle button. When we create the toggle button on the UI design window, the programming code will also generate this statement automatically. So the programming code will understand that we want to borrow the toggle button class from the library, and we want to create an instance in our programming code. When you create a toggle button on the UI design window, Eclipse will automatically add the import statement for you. So when you move to the programming section, you don't need to add the import statement or change the import statement anymore. In the future, you could use other controls. For instance, the regular buttons, edit box, text box, and so on. When you add those controls on the UI side, Eclipse will also add the import statement on the programming side. Under the import statements, you can find uh, some other automatic calls. Depending on different SDK, you could have different automatic calls. But no matter what, always find uh, a keyword class. This class keyword indicates the starting point of the blank screen we created on the UI design window. In other words, anything we program after the class statement will manipulate the blank screen and the controls on top of it. After the class statement, we have a new statement, private, toggle button, switch button, and then semicolon. What are we trying to do here? In the Java programming lecture, I taught everybody that when we want to create a new variable, we start with the data type and then give a name to the variable. When we want to create an instance in our mobile app, we can use the same way to create this instance. First, we declare the data type of the instance. In our case, it is a toggle button type. And then we give a name to this instance. 
why can we use toggle button this class as a data type? Think about the definition of a class. It is a group of something, a type of something. In our case, a type of buttons. Therefore, we can use toggle button class as a data type. In other words, when we create an instance in our mobile app, we are actually creating the variables under the control classes. What about the private keyword? What does this mean? Do you still remember what private or public are called? In the Java lecture, we talk about the private or public. They are called the access modifier. They indicate who can use the instance in the app. Because in our case, we declare the switch button instance as a private type, so only the flashlight app user can use this button. The next important statement is the find view by ID statement. We want to complete two tasks by using this statement. First, we want to make the connection between the programmatic instance with the toggle button we created on the UI design window. We talked about uh, this in week two. Second, we want to initialize the instance variable we just created. This is a requirement when we create a variable in the programming code. We have to create this find view by ID statement in the future. Remember the following rules when you create the find view by ID statement. First, on the left of the equal sign, you want to use the instance name you created or declared in this programming code. Because we declare this instance variable as switch button, so when you create the find view by ID statement, on the left of the equal sign, you write down switch button. On the right of the equal sign, you use the find view by ID statement. Remember, V, B, I are all in upper cases. We must follow the same letters and same cases because find view by ID is a comment that is offered by the Android development team. Inside of the parentheses, after r.id. We want to give another name. This name is the name that we give to the graphical toggle button when we design the user interface. Remember, we use my light switch when we design the graphical toggle button on the UI side, right? So after ID dot, you should use my light switch. This is how we make the connection between the user interface design with the programming code. What about the rest of these codes? Do we need to develop them from scratch? No, we don't have to. As I showed you earlier in this lecture, we can copy from the library example and then paste them into our own project. The only thing we need to offer is the different color if the button is turned on or off. In this class, I will offer the color switch properties to you, so you can copy the codes from my codes into your own project. You are not required to remember the color property switch. But I do want everybody to understand how this if-else structure works. If you look at the if structure, we have a, a on inside of the parentheses. If you look one line up, you will see a on is actually a boolean type variable. On the right of the equal sign, we use this block of calls to estimate if the button is turned on or off by the users. If it is turned on, then we give a true value to this on variable in the programming code. Otherwise, we give a false to this on variable. This is how the if else structure can estimate if the button is turned on or off and give different color to the user. In this lecture, I introduced the object-oriented programming practice to everyone. We also had a further discussion in the Flashlight app 
from the OOP perspective. After the class, when you review the class contents, please pay attention to two factors. First, how you can create instance variables by using the classes offered by the Android library. How you make the connection between the programmatic instance variables with the UI controls. Second, how you can use the if-else structure by using the boolean type variables.